This is a uh, sort of novel exercise in celestial navigation. Uh, our uh, star path celestial navigation instructor Steve Miller is uh, expert at uh, astronomical photography and so he recently just took and posted this picture of the sun uh, mainly uh, showing some sunspots and uh, that was actually today or yesterday maybe and um, at this, at, when, he, when I saw this nice picture, it occurred to me that he has enough data on here that we can figure out where he was when he took the picture. It's an exercise in recalling how celestial navigation works. And so what I was going to do, and so I posed that, uh, I think, on the Facebook as a place to, uh, as an exercise. So this is an answer to that exercise. Uh, okay, so let's just translate what's here. This is the t date the picture was taken, January 6th, and this is Eastern Standard Time. Now, so for our friends in Europe, that means that's a plus five. So this is uh, Greenwich Mean Time, or U Universal Time, 19 hours, 46.07. So that's the time the picture was taken. This is all technical stuff about cameras, which I don't know about. And then this number down here is actually the right ascension. The right ascension. It's the way astronomers specify the Greenwich hour angle. Uh, or maybe sidereal hour angle. Any, we have to address that. But this is then the declination. This is a regular declination, south 22 degrees, 23. This is HC, the calculated height at the time of the site. Uh, 25 degrees, 37.4, and AZ is ZN, that's the azimuth, and this is uh, apparently the angular diameter of the sun. We don't need that right now for what we're doing. Uh, okay, so that is that. So, and so I made some notes. The first thing, the problem we've got is this right ascension, and so let's address that over here. And uh, here are some notes. Um, uh, you could take a picture of this if you want, but he, I, we have to convert the right ascension. And that, uh, in our Starfinder book, we discuss this process a lot. But um, the sidereal hour angle of the object is 15 degrees times 24 hours minus the right ascension. So that all comes out, the sidereal hour angle is this. And then the Greenwich hour angle is uh, GHA Aries. And that was not in the picture, but we've got the time and date. You have to look that up in an almanac or some online service. And you look up GHA of Aries and add it to that. And so this is the key number we need. We need to know the GP of the sun. We, know, we need to know where was the sun at the time this photograph was taken. Okay, and so that's that. It's sort of like a celestial site. He kind of put up data there for a celestial site, but it's unusual in the sense that it's all worked out. Basically, it's all solved, and it's everything but the plotting. So we have to do the plotting and then do some kind of tricks and, and so forth. But let's do that. And then here's the declination. So this is the latitude and longitude of the GP, a geographical position of the sun. And then we have to do that and then uh, then go on. And so and then, okay, so let's just do that. And I'm going to use the program QTVLM. That's a, a marvelous free program uh, for Mac or PC. And uh, so this is then, uh, what is this? 22 South, 115 West. That's somewhere. Now, on this program, you'll see down here on the bottom where the, where the coordinates are located. But I don't have to worry about it too much. I would just go in here anywhere and drop a mark and just call it uh, 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 GP of the sun. And then we need to put in what the, what the values were. And the South, 22 27.3. So this is south 22. No, wait. Uh, we can do it either way. Des okay, 22. And then this, oh wow, okay. Let me try better. 22. And this is uh, um, 27.3 here, like that. Got it, 27.3. You know, celestial navigation, that's the one thing students learn first about the subject. Uh, you do have to do all the, it works, it's a ma amazing, magical stuff, and it's wonderful and reassuring and exciting, but you do have to put in the right numbers. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, and, and then, ah, oh, look at this. <laughs> Beep, did it wrong. It's south. 
So that's what you have to do. You have to check and double check where you don't get it right. Okay, so let's see here. GHA 115. Now that turns out to be just a west longitude. If this number were like bigger than, if this GHA were bigger than 180, then we would have to subtract it from 360 and call it, you know, call it east. But this is an easy one. It's 115, 4.3. So we just come down here. I'd say 115. Oops. Okay, let me click that once to engage it. 115. And then this was 4.3. 4.3. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to lock it that way and now type 4.3. Okay, I'm not adept. At, okay. So there we go. So that's uh, and then let's look at our number again. The declination is south uh 22 27.3. Uh yes. And then the GHA 115 4.3. Exactly. Okay, good. All right, that's that. And then so that is that. Okay. So there is the sun. Now, um, the way the celestial works is he told us HC, the, the calculated height, which was, where it was down here, he told us it was like uh, 25 degrees, 37.4. But we, what we want is the, is the uh, zenith, distance, zenith distance, which is the uh, radius of the, of the circle that uh, we're on. And so that zenith distance is, let me bring that over here. The zenith distance is equal to uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees minus HC. So that's the same as uh, 90 degrees, that's 8960 minus 2537. So that's the zenith distance as an angle, as an angle. But now we want to treat it, we're going to plot it on this page here in this in this chart na navigation program so we have to convert that to a distance and so you take each degree is 60 so that's 60 times 64 and then you add these are each mile one mile one degree uh, one mile one minute so that's that so there is the radius of the uh, circle of uh, equal altitude what's called circle of equal altitude and so that number, let me see if I can copy that, command C. Okay, now we go back here. Now I go back to the GP of the sun. I'm gonna right click it and edit it. And I'm gonna draw one ring on it. And I'm gonna make that, let's see, command V. Well, let me engage it. And then command V, haha, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, so that's that. And again, I have to always check and double check myself here. Oh, I cut and pasted that, it's probably right. Okay. Uh, that's a dangerous, dangerous assumption. Okay, let's say okay. All right, all right. Now here's the thing. That's actually a circle if this were a globe. If that were a globe and I had dividers and put it on my globe, desktop globe, you would see I'm actually drawing a circle. But this is a Mercator projection, so that big circle actually gets distorted that way. It's distorted this way. But this, it's actually the same distance from here to here well, I can actually do that, right? I can say, I can say, uh, uh, I can just say more options, ruler tool, and go over here. You see that distance is that 38, 60, something like that. And if I go clear up here, 38, oh, wait a minute, 3850. Am I not selling the truth? 3850. This should be. 3850. Well, it is. It's going to be the same. I just have to zoom way in and move around and everything. So that's the way it works. Okay. So, but what we want to do now, we've got to, we now we're going to kind of like fudge things a little bit, but that's what the exercise is. Fudge away. Um, uh, he's told us the azimuth, the, the, the d direction. So that direction, and so normally you can't do this with a real compass in, li in life. You can't do a compass because the compasses aren't nearly accurate enough. A gyro compass, no matter what kind of sophisticated device you want, you can't take the bearing of something that's 3,000 miles away and have it mean anything whatsoever. But these are all computed values, and we're just unfolding the computations. So we're just going to assume that that bearing to that sun, and that's this number right here, that's uh, that's the bearing. What is that? Okay, 214, 214.31. When he took the direction of that sun, when he took the picture of that sun, his instrumentation, his instrumentation probably um, 
his instrumentation calculated that. He has had to put in his latitude and longitude and everything so the stuff tracks properly, you know, so, the, so the, the, the telescope tracks properly. So it knows the latitude and longitude. There's software in there. It has an almanac in there. It knows exactly where the sun is. So it can calculate this stuff and just print it right out on the picture uh, and is right. And so we're relying on that precision to do this exercise. And so right now we're saying from where he was taking the picture, the bearing, the true bearing of the sun was 214.43 whatever degrees. So what I want to do now is, but I've got to look, to, I've got to do a couple tricks here because we're dealing with great circle distances and they're curves, not straight lines. So that's part of this exercise. So I want to just get a rough idea where it is. So I want to go look in, the, I'm going to start down here at the GP and draw a direction in the opposite direction towards wherever he is. And that's like 034. And the way you would do that is, well, it's easy. I mean, one easy way is just right click this and say more options ruler tool that's a cheating way to do it and just come up here to get something like 034 that's something like that right this is not going to be right but it's good enough for now let's just go right here and drop a mark say new mark okay and that's just uh, uh, temp temp sun okay that's our mark all right, now I can escape to get out of the ruler tool. Now I'm going to go up to the temp sun and, um, and uh, do a, a go down here, more options, draw a line to another point of interest, POI. And that point of interest is going to be the GP of the sun. Blue on blue doesn't work. Let's call it yellow. And I definitely have to have it great. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And it definitely has to be great circle. So I say, okay. So there it's drawn that line. Now, what do we know from this, from that circle? Th that's called the circle of equal altitude or the circle of position. We know that where everybody on this, everybody on this circle, everyone on this circle would have seen at that moment that sun at exactly that height exactly that height but everyone would have had a different bearing these folks up here would have been looking due south these guys over here looking a little bit southeast he was looking a little bit you know south a little bit south the southwest but everybody was on this circle so we know i mean part of the answer to the question where is he it doesn't help much the, the question was actually formed as what is the nearest town to where he was standing to take that picture not standing, but probably sitting in the chair of his observatory, actually. Uh, so, but we know that observatory was on this circle somewhere. And obviously not out in the water. It's somewhere, you know, somewhere on this land here. And, but we know more than that. We already know it's kind of like over in this direction somewhere. So what we need to do now is bring this down here. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, uh... Did I draw a line? Yeah, yeah, okay. I did a, a great circle. Yeah, there's a great circle. So I need to bring that down to this circle. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. And then uh, uh, just move this, grab this guy and move it. I'm going to move it along this line till it reads, what, 214.4. Two thirteen. Oh, I'm going past it. Uh, uh, well, I could zoom in more and maybe do. Oh, well, it's somewhere right around there. So the answer is right about there, except up on this line. Right, I got to bring it up on the line. Two fourteen point four on the line. So that's the answer. But this map doesn't help us much because we can't tell what city that is. In fact, we could tell maybe where I don't know somewhere in the south, somewhere in the south. Okay, but we could go up here and turn on this chart. These uh, these online charts. 
here. That's a, uh, QTVLM is a really um, uh, amazing program. It has all kinds of options and tricks we can do. And so, and, and this is showing some online maps. Now, you have to be online to load them once, but once you've loaded them, they're there. And I'm not going to play with that or talk about it here. We do it elsewhere. But there's some of these online maps. It'll tell you the street numbers on all the houses as you drive by them and so forth. But anyway, here is the answer. And, uh, oh, okay. There's Well, there's the answer. Uh, uh, so, oh, well, we're done. We're done. That's the answer. Here, he was... He was somewhere like here, and the answer is, uh, the answer to what's the nearest town, and it looks like the nearest town, or village, or whatever, is called New Ellington. New Ellington would be the right answer to this question. And then, what's the mile scale here? This is two miles. Well, I would just say, uh, to, to justify the whole accuracy of all of this, let me take a bigger, broader look here. Let me just say that the real answer is, see my circle zo zooming around here like this? Steve actually does live somewhere in this area right in here. So the, the real answer is not exactly at that point, but it's within a mile or so, within about a mile and a half, frankly, of that point. So that's the uncertainty in what we've done, but I haven't been as careful or as slow as we should have been. All right, I'm going to stop there. That's the exercise showing some kind of stretching the philosophies of the, of the celestial nav, plus showing this uh, fantastic program, QTVLM. Okay, thanks. <laughs>